friends, my topic is the framework for the GLP-1 treatment in the current diabetes landscape. Very famous pathophysiological input by Dr. DiFranjo, where he highlighted that there are eight pathophysiological defects for the development of type 2 diabetes. And if you look here carefully, you will find that the GLP-1 based therapy is taking care of more or less six defects here. And we know that if you target these defects, the outcome will be better. ADASD guidelines clearly tells us that after lifestyle modification and metformin, what are the options if patients are not controlled? And here we have six, you can say, choices. And if you look here at GLP-1, you'll find it is considered to be a good option because of a high reduction in SV1C, uh, that is high efficacy. And when they say that it is a patient-centered approach and you have so many things to look into, and when you start treatment, you look into effectiveness, adverse effects, contraindications, some extra gly glycemic effects, it's the, if they are possible there, cost of the therapy, whether your drug is causing hypos, and whether weight gain is there or not. So looking into all these aspects, let's see what happens to HV1C with all these different types of anti diabetic drugs. And you can see here, GLP-1 is more or less as effective here as insulin therapy and having very great decrease in HV1C. Similarly, when you treat your patients with GLP-1 receptor agonist, you find that there is significant weight reduction as compared to significant weight gained by many of these anti diabetic drugs. And of course, when you look into hypos, you find large number of hypos with all these group of drugs, but GLP-1 receptor agonists are having very little, you can say, fear of hypoglycemia. And that's why when we say that here is the proof that efficacy of the drug GLP-1 receptor agonists are high, highly any hypoglycemia, they do cause weight loss. They have some GI side effects in the form of nausea, vomiting, etc. But the most important, you can say, barrier is the cost of the therapy. So we can use that, these drugs as monotherapy or in combination with metformin or as a approach with uh, other combinations as a third drug. What is the physiological profile of GLP-1? We know that they blunt glucagon secretion they cause glucose-dependent insulin secretion, they modulate gastric emptying, and they improve satiety, and thereby they take care of fasting as well as post prandial blood sugar profile, as well as they cause weight loss. It is important to understand the dose-response relationship for the effect of GLP-1. Here you can see that as the do uh, concentration of GLP-1 is rising, you get most important action here, that is, increase in insulin secretion and decrease in glucagon. If concentration further rises, there is decrease in gastric emptying. It also causes decrease in appetite and food intake and weight loss. But if the concentration is further rising, you know that the side effect profile of these drugs, that is vomiting, diarrhea, nausea and abdomen, starts coming in. If you look here carefully, DPV-4 inhibitors are very milder drugs and they cause very small rise in GLP-1 concentration. As compared to that, GLP-1 receptor agonists are causing a pharmacological rise in GLP-1 and that's why they are more effective in their action also. They cause increase in GLP-1 activity, thereby causing decrease in glucagon, increase in insulin. They take care of fasting, post prandial as well as HV1C. They cause weight effect by decreasing gastric emptying, by decreasing caloric intake, and thereby the weight loss is there. In addition to glycemic control, we also are looking into extra glycemic or beyond glycemic control. And here is the important thing that they do cause weight loss. And of course, there are some cardiovascular benefits in the form of systolic blood pressure reduction, improvement in the biomarkers of the cardiovascular risk, and in some animal studies, there are myocardial function and survival in animal models are improved. So, across the board, these are different studies or you can say development programs for GLP-1 receptor agonists. And you can see here that all these drugs 
in this group of, uh, you can say, antidiabetic, you will find that on an average there is a 1.5% reduction in HbA1c. You can see here that exenatide extended release given once a week is far, far better in reducing HbA1c as compared to cetagliptin and pioglitazone. Of course, the weight reduction is very important. It is because of slow gastric emptying and suppressive, suppressing the appetite and improving satiety in our, the patients because of its action in central nervous system. And if you look into the weight reduction part across the board in all these GLP-1 receptor agonists, you will find from 1, one kg to on an average 4 kg of weight loss in these development programs. And you can see here in this exenatide and extended release preparation causing 2.3 kg of weight loss as compared to pioglitazone which is causing 2.8 kg of weight gain. In addition to their glycemic effect as well as their effect on stomach at liver where they decrease glucose production, improve insulin action, we know that in brain they have decrease in appetite, improving neural protection, in heart they are having so many good cardiac protective effects and all these things are maybe because of decrease in appetite, decrease in macrophage converted into foam cells, decreasing proliferation of smooth muscle cells, and of course endothelial dysfunction as highlighted in the previous lecture by Dr. Antonio, that they, decreases nit they increases nitric oxide, decreases reactive oxygen species, and decreases inflammation, and thereby they take care of reduction in atherosclerotic plaque. In animal studies, GLP-1 receptor agonist decreases the infarction site in preclinical myocardial ischemia models. Both exenatide BID as well as liraglutide were shown in animal experiments that they causes decrease in myocardial infarction after occlusion of carotid coronary arteries. So that's why we can say that clinical advantages of GLP-1 receptor agonists are that they significantly decrease HbA1c, reduces weight, have no or low risk of hypoglycemia when used as monotherapy and can be combined in most of the uh, time with other antidiabetic drugs and today is the era of combination of drugs so we know that these drugs are to be given in combination. Whether these drugs are to be used by only specialist or a general practitioner can use it. It is having easier to monitor glucose level with these drugs rather than with insulin. It simplifies the management of diabetes for patients and providers. Patient preference is of course important and frequency of injections, for example, you have once a day and now in the pipeline you will be getting injections which is once a week and that will be making uh, things very easier for our patients. Now there are so many drugs in this group of GLP-1 receptor agonists. Are they same? And you can divide them according to the source like human based or exentin 4 based, dose frequency once a day, twice a day or once a week, pharmacokinetic like short acting or long acting or what is the main glycemic target, whether they are targeting prandial or whether they are targeting fasting. So you have so many drugs now available, so you can divide them into these groups also. And if you look into this uh, uh, designing, just like insulin, you can see here people have designed or you can say substituted and added something here and they modified the molecule just like the different, uh, you can say, insulin preparations. And here is the native GLP-1, here is liraglutide where there is a additional of a uh, side chain of uh, fatty acids. You have exenatide which is uh, a derivative of exenatine 4 and lexicinatide is more or less similar to exenatide except they are having a hexam, six molecules of uh, this lysine and that's why it is having a more chances of developing uh, heptamers there. Then you will have albuglutide which is a doubling of the native GLP-1 with the attachment of a protein. Similarly you will find that dulaglutide is a very complex molecule where two GLP-1 molecules are attached with a spacer to the FC portion of the, uh, this FC fragment of the synthetic human immunoglobulin G4 and thereby it makes it more, you can say, resistant to the action of DPP4 as well as increasing its half-life and decreasing renal clearance. Similarly, semaglutide is just like liraglutide except there is some, uh, you can say, 
addition of uh, 18 change, 18, uh, you can say, 18, C18 fatty acid with a spacer. So you can divide them according to whether they are exentin, exentin 4 based or human GLP-1 based or you can uh, differentiate them according to their uh, amino acid sequences or the important message here is that when you are using exentin 4 based therapy, the chances of developing antibodies are higher as compared to GLP-1 based uh, molecules. You can also look into the difference according to the size of the molecules. These are the smaller size, you can say GLP-1 receptor agonists and dulaglutide and albiglutide are larger in their, you can say, composition and larger proteins such as albumin do not cross the blood-brain barrier, blood barrier and that's why their CNS effect may be reduced. You can also divide them into pharmacokinetic properties. They are short-acting like exenatide and lexicinatide or long-acting like liraglutide to be given once or all these newer GLP-1 receptor agonists which are to be given once in a week. And here you can see as this development is going on, now people are preferring once a week preparations and the half-life of these preparations are significantly increased. You can see here those drugs which are short-acting are having main effect on postprandial blood sugar as compared to long-acting GLP-1 receptors who are having main effect on uh, fasting blood glucose. They have some subtle differences in uh, fasting insulin secretion which is better with long-acting. Glucagon secretion is more or less equally inhibited. Gastric emptying is more inhibited with shorter acting as compared to long-acting. Induction of nausea is more common with short acting but uh, and they attenuate slowly. This uh, nausea is attenuating very slowly as compared to that long-acting GLP-1 receptors are having lesser chances of nausea and it attenuates quickly within 4 to 8 weeks. Body weight reduction is more or less similar in these uh, studies and when you, in simplifying that you say that in short-acting GLP-1 receptors are having main effect on the postprandial, some effect on the fasting and long-acting are having main effect on the fasting blood sugar as compared to postprandial blood sugar. And this is, same thing is highlighted here. These are the eight-point program, you can say eight-point profile of patients. When you are giving lexicinatide, you will find it is having main effect on the postprandial aspects as compared to liraglutide, which is more or less having dual, you can say, action on reducing both fasting as well as postprandial. These are the FDA-approved GLP-1 receptors agonist. Exenatide, which is very old preparation, you can say, given twice a day. Liraglutide, we are using it. It is to be given once a day. It is intermediate in its action. Exenatide, once weekly, is now available in USA. It is once a week, long acting, but it is not a different preparation. The delivery method is changed there, and albiglutide once weekly, and of course, you can add here dulaglutide also. We know that exenatide, which was derived from the Gila monster, uh, exentin-4 derivative, which was derived from here, it is having a shorter half-life. You know that it is not to be used in patients who are having moderate to severe renal impairment. Liraglutide, we know that it is a drug which we are using for the last many years. Here they have changed the uh, amino acid sequence in one area and attached a C16 fatty acids. Thereby, it is having a 97 amino acid homology to the human GLP-1, having improved pharmacokinetic. It leads to albumin binding through acylation and heptamer formation, and that's why having a prolonged duration of action, that's why having slow absorption from the subcutaneous tissue, resistant to DPP-4, and having longer half-life. It's pharmacokinetic, we can see that it is to be given once a day, and when you are developing other GLP-1 receptor agonists, you have to compare it with the existing one. So most of these uh, study programs you can see here are taking care of that part and most of these newer GLP-1 receptor agonists are compared to either exenatide or to liraglutide. And you can see here in these other programs, when you compare liraglutide to other uh, drugs like albuglutide or dulaglutide or exenatide once a week, you find liraglutide is still causing significant better HV1C reduction except with dulaglutide which is having more or less equal reduction. Weight reduction is also better with liraglutide as compared to uh, other GLP-1 receptor agonists. Now people are preferring more and more 
longer acting GMP ones because the reduction in HP1C is better there, the side effect profile is less, and the durability of the response is there. For example, exenitide once a week, albuglutide, and dulaglutide. So you can see here the uh, exenitide was uh, extended to its action by LAR preparation by the name of my duron. What they have seen here that the LAR preparation is twice as effective as the original Vita with a similar safety, lower nausea and greater weight loss profile. And you can see here what they have done. They have produced a biodegradable polymeric microspheres for the extended release. The detectable concentration of exenitide is available for a period of 10 weeks. Exenitide at or near the surface dissolves and diffuse away very quickly and then this biodegradable polymer is creating pores as the time passes and then exenitide diffuses and releases from the microspheres. This is the way of you can say extending the duration of action. These are the GLP-1 receptors which are newer and emerging like dulaglutide which is mainly used by 1.5 milligram per week and here you can compare it with glargine where the reduction in hv one is very less as compared to this drug. Semaglutide is also showing some far, you can say better reduction in hv one c But we should also remember what are the downside. And you can see here the potential clinical disadvantage of GLP-1 is that the compliance issue, these are injectable preparation because these are amino acids, you can say peptides, gastrointestinal adverse effects are very, very disturbing many times. You sometimes require training of the patient for these weekly preparations and of course the most important you can say argument against their use is they have high cost. Of course people were earlier talking about pancreatitis and pancreatic cancer but ADA as well as EMA clearly says that we at present the evidence is not showing against them and we are ready to use them in our day to day practice. Of course sometimes you have to be careful about renal impairment and use of GLP-1 receptor agonists because they can't be used in uh, severe renal insufficiency. I think Dr. Ajay Kumar will be highlighting what is the concept of combining basal insulin with GLP-1 receptor agonists because basal insulin and GLP-1 receptor agonists are com having complementary action and they have additive effect and that's why you have so many trials now whether GLP-1 receptors are added to insulin or insulin is added to GLP-1, there is a significant reduction in HV1C, body weight is reducing as compared to most of the insulin therapy where you get body weight which is increasing and of course many of these studies are telling us that there is a reduction in insulin doses also. So fixed dose combinations will be taken care by Dr. Ajay uh, and I, I will just finish with my last slide that here is guidelines are again highlighting that you can use GLP-1 receptor agonists as monotherapy, as dual therapy with metformin, on, uh, even as uh, triple therapy and the green bars here telling us that these drugs are having uh, some fewer uh, lesser adverse events and they have some extra benefits as compared to reduction in uh, hyperglycemia. Thank you.